everybody. Happy Sunday. What a beautiful, beautiful day. It got it got quite warm outside, so that was nice. I've been inside most of the day. I've had a very productive weekend, so I've been working on... Um, actually, I've just been working on all kinds of stuff, so I'll tell you about my little productive weekend. I was very happy I got home yesterday from work, got outside, got the lawn mowed and trimmed, so I didn't have to do that this weekend. Like on Sunday and Monday, I like to do stuff in the house when I'm home. So I am not an outdoor person, and I got that all taken care of yesterday. So hello, everybody. So I um, so I got my lawn mowed and trimmed yesterday, so got that done last night. And then I came in, and I wanted to quilt a quilt today on my long arm. And so I loaded the... Um, back last night and I loaded the rest of the quilt and quilted it today. So I'll have to show you my quilt that I did. It turned out really good. It's not a real big one, but it's, it's called Walnut Grove. So it's one of the uh, Little House on the Prairie quilts. These were all free patterns from the company. I can't remember the company of the fabric. And then the backing says Little House on the Prairie. I don't know if you can see it or not. But this is my quilt that I did. I got the whole quilt done today and even got the binding on it. So I was really happy. But it's pretty. It's kind of a prairie print. You know, it's kind of a prairie print. And a real fun pattern. So I got this done today. So that's one of the things I did. And then I also, um, oh, and then yesterday, as most of you, you may have seen, I'm going to lay this down over here. As many of you have seen, I, um, I have been busy. So this has been a good productive weekend. I like to hang out at home <laughs> and work on stuff. So um, I'm trying to get my quilts quilted. I haven't, you know, touched my long arm because it didn't go to Animosa with me. And um, I haven't touched it for like almost two years. And I've done two quilts since I've been home, but I still have about 20 to go because I think there's 20, I think there was 22 quilts in my closet to, to quilt. So hopefully I'm just going to keep working at them and I'm hoping I can get them done this summer. So we'll see at least some of them. And then, so yesterday I uploaded to YouTube. Now, for some reason, um, Facebook was being mean to me and it wouldn't let, let me upload my uh, Welcome Spring bench pillow videos. So I just put them on YouTube. So if you go to Sew Along with Jan, my YouTube channel, so along with Jan and the playlist is called Welcome Spring. And so um, I put the, the on the group, I put a, a link to the playlist where all four videos are. Oh, did you watch them yesterday? Yeah, these this, this one was kind of a challenge for me because there was some stuff that was a little harder to do. Um, but I'll, I'm going to hold it up so you can see it. So here's Welcome Spring. And this was really fun to do. And I ended up doing pull flowers for the flowers instead of making other flowers. So this are the, this this video series is, is only on YouTube. For some reason, I couldn't upload to, to Facebook. I don't know why. I think it was the internet at the store. So, but I thought, you know, they're on YouTube. I gave you a link. You can go watch them all on YouTube. Okay, so this is up there for you to enjoy. So this was one of my little kits that I wanted to get done. I put some, uh, I don't know if you can see it, I put some vinyl fuse on the on the rain boots and on the umbrella so it's shiny. So this was really fun. This was a really fun project. I've been trying to do this. And then the other one um, I want to do is the May one. It's the flowers with the little flower pots. So I'm hoping to get that one done you know, next. That's, I've got it cut out, ready to go. So that's another thing I've been doing. Let's see, what else have we been doing? So I've gotten a lot of things done today. So give me a second. I think my sound is up on my tablet. I need to turn it down here. There we go. 
Otherwise, now I hope the air conditioner is not annoying to everyone because I uh, I have to have it in here. It's like, um, well, it's only about 80 degrees in here. I just turned the air conditioner on a little bit ago. So, but um, it, it gets kind of warm in my sewing room when the sun comes in this window down here. So anyway, all right. So tonight we're going to have a little fun in the software. And these are my favorite classes. I love software classes. Yeah, Marianne, this is kind of spring. I figure it's still spring, right? Because it's not Memorial Day yet. Once Memorial Day hits, we're in summer. <laughs> you don't hear the air conditioner. Oh, good. Yeah, I have to have it on. I have to have it blowing on me. It's like right behind me here. But um, it uh, in the summer, I got to have an air conditioner in this room because it gets so warm in here. It's like, like I said, it's usually around 80 degrees in here. And I can get it down a little lower with the air conditioner. So, okay. So hi, everybody. Everybody's coming in. So anyway, so today we're going to have some fun with the software and we're going to make a pin cushion. So this little pin, let me, let me get the glare off of here. So we're going to make this little pin cushion and I put some of those um, walnut shells. You know, I forgot to grab my walnut shells. I'll go grab them here in a few minutes. Yeah. Fusible vinyl. It's called, uh, uh, vinyl fuse. It's from Pellon. That's what I used on the rain boots, but you put it on the fabric. It's really cool. So um, we're going to make this little pin cushion tonight, and we're going to make this out of something that we've already made. So I want people to realize you don't have to start from scratch every single time you digitize something, and I often don't. You know, I start with something that I already made that I'm like, oh, well, I could use that to start this because the steps are going to be the same at least for part of it. So that's how I made this pin cushion. Okay. And I'll grab my uh, walnut shells. I use the walnut, the crushed walnut shells in inside this. And I used, I made a little muslin, um, like a little pin, a little pillow, <laughs> but I covered, I filled it with the, uh, with the crushed walnut shells for this. So, okay. So, and make sure you're commenting because somebody gets to win the pin cushion tonight. Okay. So this is tonight's prize is a pin cushion. So I've got two of them. So I made two of them. So one of these will be the prize tonight. Okay. So make sure you comment. And if you comment, then you get entered to win the, for the prize. Okay. All right. So let me get to, we, I need to share my screen here with you and I'm going to turn off the banner. Turn off the banner <clears throat> and then I'm going to share my screen and hopefully go to, I got to get the right one. So hopefully I get the right one here. So I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me okay. Yeah, I really love um, software classes. Software classes are like my favorite thing. All right, so let's see here. So hopefully you'll be able to see my screen in a minute. I got the right thing selected. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to see my desktop here in a minute. Everybody still hearing me okay? Hopefully the air conditioner is not annoying, so. Good, I'm glad you like the software class. This is like my... Um, yeah, the little pillow inside, I just made it out of muslin and um, I gave you the instructions. So let me talk first about the information that you need to do this. So I, I put the information, um, it'll also be in the YouTube video description right underneath the YouTube video. And I'll put the, the um, link to it in um, on the video on the group here too, okay? Um, but I always put the link in the descriptions for the YouTube videos right under the video. There's going to be a little description and then you might have to hit the see more button to, to see the whole thing. And then I'll also put it on the Facebook group. But the but all of the Dropbox files that for all of the videos for the sewing and the software are in the very first post on Facebook it's called a featured post and it's a Dropbox link. There's one for the software 
and one for the sewing. And you can you can download the whole Dropbox at the same time. OK, so if you're not sure where to go, look, just go to Sew Along with Jan on Facebook. Look for the very first post. It's called a featured post on the group. And then you can click on that and it'll take you to the software uh, Dropbox or the sewing Dropbox because there's two Dropboxes. OK, so make sure that you, um, if you need something for tonight, or if you want any of the other classes that I've done, go download them so you can put them on your computer. Okay. All right. So that's where that is. And I'll also put it under the description of the video on Facebook and also on YouTube. So, so there'll be a link there to the, to the files that we need for tonight. Okay. All right. So this was something that I made. And also I made the, um, I wrote some sewing instructions for you for the little pin cushion and how to make the little, um, the little bag, you know, the little um, uh, walnut shell bag too. Okay. So I tell, I, I have that all information in there and then I just have sewing the pin cushion. Okay. So it tells you how, what to cut everything and how to do it. And it's done in a four by four hoop. So you don't have to have a very big machine to make these. So, okay. All right, so we're going to start using, we're going to use um, Perfect Embroidery Pro tonight, my um, my favorite software. And by the way, there was, a, there is an update to the software, uh, to the tool shed software and what they have done. And I'm just going to show you, I don't know if some of you have known, and I didn't find out for a couple of weeks, but they have a new software and it is a cutting software. So I just opened up Toolshed. I'm going to hit create a new design here. Okay. And I'm going to look down here where it's where my little shopping cart is. Like if over here underneath or on the right hand side at the bottom, there's a little shopping cart tab. And I'm going to click on that. And I want to show you what the update brought in. There's a new software. It's called Cut and Stitch. And so it is a software for like cutting machines it's more specifically cutting information and then and there's a new um class you know a new online class using cut and stitch and i can't remember what they called it i found it on their group so i'm going to go watch it tim's going to have some more of their classes there's two or maybe three new ones so we're going to do some of these new ones but anyway they have a new software it's called cut and stitch and you can actually make cutting files though if you have perfect embroidery pro you can actually make cutting files and that i think is going to be the next software class is we're going to make a cutting file in perfect embroidery pro even though it's for embroidery we can also make cutting files for our scan and cut so that's how i made remember the little flowers that we did a few weeks ago the little cut the little felt flowers with the scan and cut that's how i made them was in the software. I make most of my cutting files in this software because it's very easy to make or use. And um, so I'm anxious to see cut and stitch in action. I wanna see if there's extra cutting things that I need as a, you know, like a scan and cut user. Um, so I haven't really seen the software yet. I, I looked at it briefly, but um, I do use just perfect embroidery pro all the time to make cut files. So we will be making cut files in perfect embroidery pro probably in the next software class. Cause I wanted to show you how I created those um, flowers and how we can create um, other cut files as well. So like if cut files for like, we're doing appliques and how, and that type of thing. So, um, Anyway, so that's something new. So make sure you update your software because otherwise you won't have that little option. And if you want to look at it, you can actually just look at a trial version. So right now it says cut and stitch and I can go over here at the bottom to the right and I can hit the little dots and I can try it. So if I hit try, okay, and it says the output will be disabled because I don't own it but I can at least look at cut and stitch. So like this is cut and stitch right now that I'm looking at right now. And it looks a lot like Perfect Embroidery Pro to me, but there are some things up here at the top that are 
um, more, um, oh, they have a knockout. Cool. I love knockouts. We'll have to do that. So they, these little things up here at the top are more specific to cutting machines. Okay. Ooh, and look, there's rhinestone stuff. Oh, hot diggity dog. Look at this. We're going to have some fun. We may have some fun with this. Okay, so we'll we'll be looking at that. And I'm going to go watch one of the videos um, that they did. So anyway, that is cut and stitch. So you can go try it. Just kind of take a look at it to see what it looks like, what kind of things are in it. Um, and but we can do some of the stuff in Perfect Embroidery Pro as well. So because they all kind of go together, you know. All right. So I'm going to go back to Perfect Embroidery Pro in that same area. Back up here to where it says Perfect Embroidery Pro. I'm going to click the little. I do not, Pat. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about it yet. Um, that's something I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to go do some research this week. Because I just found out, found for sure they had it. Because everybody's been talking about this. And I'm like, I didn't know anything about it. And it was about 10 days ago that I heard about it the first time. So I do not know how much it is yet. So I will find that out for you. So Perfect Embroidery Pro, we're going to click the little polka dots again. And I'm going to say make that a default because I need to have Perfect Embroidery Pro for my, uh, I need to have Perfect Embroidery Pro for my software right now. Okay. So we've got Perfect Embroidery Pro. <clears throat> All right, so what we're going to do then with this little this little pillow is we're this little uh, pincushion, I should say. We're going to make this out of something we made a couple of years ago. So a couple of years ago, we made a one of the little mini quilts that was called um, I think it was called America the Beautiful. And so I gave you that C2S file in this the file of stuff you need to do this class. So what we're going to do is let's let's we got this all open, but let's just check to make sure we have um, like our grid and stuff set up the way we want. So I created a new design. I want to be in inches. So I'm going to right click on the top um, ruler bar here and make sure I'm in inches, which I am. I want to show the grid and that is checked. And I want my grid settings to be quarter of an inch. So right now mine are at half. So I'm going to type in. 0.25 in both of these so that it's quarter inch grids. Okay, and then I'm going to click OK. So I kind of like to do my setup first so I know what I'm doing. Okay. Now we, we have our setup here. So what I like to do when I bring in a file, now I'm ready to bring in a file. Since I didn't click open to start, I clicked um, create a new design. I'm going to merge that file that I want to uh, alter. In. So I'm going to go to file and merge. So then it will come into the screen I have open. Okay. And it's on my desktop and I'm going to bring in America the Beautiful. So it's in this folder here. And here's that America the Beautiful. That's that little, that little mini quilt that we made. And for those of you who don't have software, you can um, go download these and you can sew, just sew them out because I have all the PES files in there too. OK, so here's America the Beautiful. So I'm going to start with this. So this is something I made before and I don't need to start completely over. I can start with something I already had done. So let's go over here. I don't want to look at my purchases anymore. I want to look at my sequence view. So the sequence view is the first little tab over here on the right. So I'm going to click that. And right now everything is grouped up. So you can see it came in all grouped. OK. And I'm going to look at this. So if I touch one thing, see it, how it it still is grouped. Okay, so it's all in one piece yet. So I need to ungroup this first before I can do anything with it. So we're going to go ahead and click on the word group. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to ungroup. Okay, and there's a couple of other ways to do that. You can also, I'm just going to ungroup it. You could have also used the ungroup uh, icon up on the top here. Okay. So I just use the right click method and ungrouped. I, I still have a tendency to right click because it's been like that for years. Okay. All right. So now I can see, so see if I go over here in my sequence view now, see how I can just 
click on the items that I want or don't want. So see, I can get to each individual item now. Okay. So there's a few things I don't want. I need to start out with a placement line for my batting, which actually is the first step in this, because that's what I did when we made the little mini quilt. We made a placement line for our batting. And let's see, then we need to tack our batting down, which would be the second line. And then we need to lay some fabric down and we need to tack down the fabric. So that's the third line. So see, these are already done. We don't need to do anything with these, okay? And then it's gonna quilt it. So the fourth thing was quilting. Well, I liked the quilting in this. That's why I chose this one because I can, it's a kind of a diamond. So hopefully you can see that up on the screen. It's kind of a diamond. So I really like that. But I don't want the border. So the next thing down in the sequence view is the little star border all the way around. So I don't think I, I don't want that in my pin cushion. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to select it and then I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard. And it's gone. All right, so we don't need that part. All right. Now, I also don't want the flag in there. So I'm going to see the next thing is the stripes in the flag. Well, we don't need that. So I'm going to select that. I just selected the whole color because it's all the red. And I'm going to click delete on the keyboard. And then the next step, let's see. These are the, okay, so we've got the quilting. I want that. So this next step kind of combined together. So we need to make sure we get all, out what we want and not everything. So I want to leave the first thing because that's my, my quilting. This, this next piece, oh, here's the stripes. Okay, so a stripe. I'm going to hold my control key down now. And then there's another stripe. And here's another stripe. And here's another stripe. So I don't need the stripes in there. So we'll just delete those. I got them selected and I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. Okay. And then I don't need the star field, the blue star field. So that's selected now. I am using the Dime Perfect Embroidery Pro, Lisa. And then I'm going to hit delete. And then we've got, um, oh, this is the outline. So the outline is the next thing selected. I don't need that either. So I'm going to hit delete again. And now it's going to combine that again because I had white for my quilting and I don't want to, to get rid of my quilting. Okay, the little the little cross hatches. I don't want to get rid of that, but I do need to get rid of these stars. So that's there. And let's see, I'm gonna hold my control key down. There's another star. And you can see over here where they're becoming selected. I'm just gonna keep selecting until I get all the stars. Selected here. I've got my control key down while I'm clicking on these. There and there. So there's all those stars. I want to get rid of those. I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard. And then I'm going to get rid of my text because we don't want that text. We're going to do different text. So I'm going to select all the text by the color over here and I'm going to click delete on my keyboard. So now what I'm left with is the batting placement line, because when we do these little in the hoop things, I need a batting placement line first, and then I need to put my batting in my hoop, and I'm going to sew it down, so that's the second thing. And then the third thing, I'm uh, in between, I'm going to lay my fabric down over my batting after I've trimmed it, and I'm going to I'm going to tack my fabric down over the top, okay? And then I'm going to quilt it. And that's what the cross hatches are. And then we're going to do some other stuff. So then we're going to do the eat, sleep, sew. And we're going to do the little scatter um, with the carousel tool next. And then at the very end, what, one of the things that's left. Yes, it is. I just did it one thing at a time, Lynn, so that people could see what I was doing, you know, what I was taking out. So, so yes, you can. If, if you, everything that you don't want, you can do it all at one time and hit delete once. Okay. 
I just wanted people to see what I was what I was taking out. And then the very last thing at the very end, we're going to put a, our two pieces of fabric on the back. And then we're going to sew all the way around the outside edge of our pin cushion to make it an envelope back like one of our pillows. OK, so that's what this last piece is. So that we're going to do some stuff and move some things around. So it'll happen between the quilting and the final tack down. OK, so that's what we have left. Now, what I want to do now is I don't want this to be so big. So if you look at the top right now, it's about uh, five and three quarters inches square. So that was the size of our little um, our little mini quilts. So they fit in that cute little six inch frame, you know. OK, so this is too big. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go up here to edit and I'm going to select all because I want to select everything. OK. And then I'm going to go over here to my properties box at the top on the right hand side and I'm going to click over. There's a little arrow here. I'm going to click all the way over here until I get to the word transform because that's going to be the size. So right now it's five and three quarters by five and three quarters. Well, that's kind of big for um, our little pin cushion. So I want it to be and I happen to know I wanted this in a four by four hoop and the largest you can have is for a four by four hoop is 3.9 by 3.9. So I went ahead and made this width and height. And if you notice, my maintain aspect ratio is clicked. I'm going to type in the, the number 3.9 and then it changed the height as well. And I'm going to click apply and then it's going to make this the size I want it. All right. So then it just made it smaller. So now it's the size I want it to be for my new project. And we didn't have to sit there and draw all those those squares and do all the um, decorative fill and all in the quilting and all that stuff. See, we already had it all done. OK. So is this making sense to everybody so far? So we took that little mini quilt that was almost six inches and made, took out what we wanted and made it down to about four inches for our little pin cushion. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use, um, I got the daisies. I got these cute little daisies and they are in the, um, they are one of the symbols in the software. So there's lots and lots of designs in this software that you can use. And so I'm going to go up here to the top row and there's a little, it looks like a club, <laughs> you know, like a on a card. It looks like a club up here. And I want to select, I'm going to hit select. And all of these little symbols come up. Now, these little designs are very small. They're meant to sew out very small. And if you noticed, I clicked this little arrow right next to the, to the symbol there, this little arrow, and then I got into select because then it brings up this little list, okay? And what I'm looking for is a flower. And these are roughly in alphabetical order and it's flower zero one. So it's this little daisy looking flower right here. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click OK. So now I have, I don't know if you can see it too well on the screen, but I have like a little um, plus sign on my cursor. OK, so I'm just going to click on the screen to input it. So I'm just going to click over here and it's going to input that little flower. OK, so I just stuck it over there. All right. Doesn't matter where it is. You can just put it anywhere you want. And now we are going to select that little flower. OK, so if I look down in my sequence view, that little flower has two colors. It has a center and it has the outside. So it comes in as a little grouped design. And I'm going to click on that word group, which is my little flower. 
and I'm going to use the carousel tool. So the carousel tool has several different effects that you can do with it, but we're going to use the scatter effect. So I wanted my little daisies to be kind of scattered across my pin cushion, and I was going to put some letters in there, but I want to, um, I need to kind of um, just kind of get a, it's very hard to place things and have them look random. So I love the scatter thing because it makes them look more random. And it also adjusts the sizes. Okay. So what we're going to do is go up and get the carousel tool. The carousel, it's, this, this has to be selected first, the little daisy. And the carousel tool is this little round thing. It looks like a round thing with has little circles in it. Okay. And I'm going to click on the little arrow next to that. And I'm going to go down. So there's all these different things. You can reflect. You can do the carousel, which makes the circles. You can do, we've used the circle one before. Um, place, you can use reflect. And then there's one called scatter. And I love the scatter. So we're going to choose scatter. Okay. And then it's going to come up. This, this little box is going to come up. And look, it just kind of made them scattered all over. Now, we need to make this smaller because we need it to fit, you know, within our 3.9 inch square. So right now it's pretty big. It's eight inches. So that's way too big. So we're going to go ahead and make this 3.75 inches. And you notice that, again, aspect ratio is checked. So it's changing both of the sizes at the same time. Okay. So I got that. A second here. I'm going to... Turn my, I got some little notes here for me, so I won't miss things. Okay, let's see. So now the next section here says settings. So we have a minimum size. That means it's going to be the least, the smallest it will go is 80% of the original size. And then there's a maximum size. Right now it's set at 150% of the maximum size. Now these are pretty small um, designs and they're meant to be sewn small. So don't get over exuberant with your sizes here because sometimes they'll look a little sparse. So I left them at the default settings, which seemed to work pretty well. And then my minimum distance, I want them, you can see over here, they're pretty close together. I want them to be further apart than that. So I'm going to change this minimum distance to 0.25 inches. So in other words, a quarter of an inch. I want the them to auto rotate. So because if you rotate them, they kind of look more random that way. They're not all going the same direction. And if you want them to go the same direction, deselect that. And I also love auto sequence by color because these have two colors in them, right? So then all of the yellow will sew and all of the, the, I put brown centers on my daisies. So, and these are orange, I think here, but then they will all sew together. So you won't have to go yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange. Okay. So I'm going to click that little auto resequence by color also. Okay. Now you can see that with the, after I did that, things changed over here on my screen. Okay. Now, if you're not sure that you like that particular arrangement, hit the apply button again. So watch, it'll change. There's another arrangement. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that one. You could hit it again. That one looks cool. Okay. So just hit it a few times until you think you like what you see. That one looks good. Let's use that one. Okay, so every time you hit apply, it's going to scatter them again. So that's really cool. So I'm going to click OK now. And then I am going to right click on my little my little square here, because obviously it's not centered in my pin cushion. I'm going to right click and whoops, I'm, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to right click on my on my um, my ruler bar up here. Sorry. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to center origin. And that way it's right inside my pin cushion. So I made it a little bit smaller than the, um, I made it just a little bit smaller than the um, pin cushion size. Okay. 
All right, now, if you look over here on the right, that's still one big piece, okay? Now, we may need to move some stuff around um, when we start to put our letters in. So let's do the lettering and kind of get the lettering where we want, and then we may have to move some of these flowers around to make them fit better, okay? So we're, we're not going to worry about this group down here yet. We're going we're gonna to do a little lettering first. So I'm going to add the words eat, sleep, and sew. And I'm going to make them three individual words instead of having them grouped together because then I can move them around where I want them. Okay. So I'm going to go up and get my text tool, which is the letter T. I'm gonna, just going to click down here on the work surface. And I'm going to go up and hit my little box up here on the right, my properties box, and I'm going to type in the words eat. So the first word is going to be eat. I'm going to use a capital E and then lowercase. And then I used, let's see, I used curly Q for my font. I love that font. So where is it? Let's see, curly Q. Here it is. So we're going to use curly Q. And then I used the size of 0.6 inches. So let's hit the height of 0.6. And I'm going to go down here. I, I need to change the colors. So I'm just going to go down here before I deselect this and right click on um, color number one just to get it to be a different color. All right. It doesn't matter what color it is. So. All right, so I think maybe I didn't get my apply button. So I'm going to go to my height again at 0.6 and click apply so I can get that a little smaller. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to do this again. And let's go up to our Zoom and say to fit so we can see everything. So here's the word eat. Okay. Now I think I kind of want eat. Um, I'm going to go get my selection tool because over here, instead of my text tool, because I have a tendency to make a mess with the text tool. So I'm going to click my selection tool so I can move my word eat kind of over where I want it. I think I kind of want it probably roughly in there somewhere. So let's go get the word sleep. So we're going to go back to our text tool. I'm going to click over here again, and we're going to click in the properties box and type the word sleep. And I put a capital S. I'm gonna do the 0.6 inches again and curly Q and I'm gonna click apply. Think I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make that color number one. So I'm gonna right click down on the number one color box so my letters are all the same color. Okay, and let's go up here to to the zoom and to fit so we can see the word sleep. So there's that. I'm going to go grab that selection tool again. And see, I'm going to end up putting this up over in, in this area somewhere. So see, we're going to need to move a few flowers. So I think I'll leave my sleep over here for a minute. And then let's do the third word. It's going to say so. So I'm going to go get my text tool again. I'm going to click down here on the work surface. And I'm going to go up to my properties box and type the word so with a capital S at 0.6 inches. And then I'm going to click apply. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go down here to the bottom and I'm going to right click on the number one color box because I want all my text to be the same color. Okay. I'm going to go grab my selection tool because I make a mess with my letters. If I Try to pull them around because I'm always pulling a letter out. So let's just grab all of these out. Let's see here. So that's going to go kind of in here. I'm kind of looking at my pin cushion here. And you can see that down in here, like we're going to have to move some of our middle flowers so we can get the word sleep in here and then some of the bottom ones. So I'm just going to pull eat out for just a minute. That's actually about in the right spot. So we may just leave him in there for a minute. But let's see if we can find a place for sleep. But since if I go click on my flowers, see how they all select? Well, we need to get those ungrouped so that we can um, 
we can work with each flower individually and just kind of move it around a little bit to work in around our words. Okay, so now we're going to go over here to the um, sequence view again. And down here where that word group is, that's that scatter. All right, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click ungroup. And as you can see, it did make it in two colors. So it, it, it did the, um, the sequence by color. So here's the yellow and here's the orange. Okay, so that's good. But I'm just going to warn you, when we need to move these around, they're in separate pieces now. So like you're going to have to get a hold of the flower you want with the center. And then we can kind of group those together. So let's work, worry about these two middle ones first because our sleep is going to kind of fit in here. So let's see if we can get a hold of these. So here's that yellow flower and here's the center. Okay. And I'm going to, I've got those two and I'm going to right click on those and I'm going to group them together. So then they'll move together. See, so I don't have to worry about, and then I need to move this one. So let's do the same thing. I'm going to get the center. I'm going to hold my control key down and I'm going to get the little flower. Okay. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to group again. Okay. So then I can kind of move these around where I need them. So we know those two big ones are grouped. All right, so let's see if we can get our word sleep in here. Because I want, let's see, I don't think I quite got something. Let me move those back a second here. When these come in, just so you know, I'm going to back up. I'm hitting the back button. Okay. Um, when these come in, these little designs are actually like stitch files. So sometimes they there's little pieces, and I missed a couple little pieces. So... I'm going to use my sequence view to help me. So let's pull this up. I just pulled the sequence view up and we're going to open up those flowers. And I want this flower right here and this flower right here. So let me see if I can get a hold of those. So if you look over here in my sequence view, see how it says it has a run and a satin. And if I go down further, so did the center. It had a run and a satin. Okay, so now I think I have it all and I'm going to right click and I'm going to group those together. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So what I did is I kind of had a little box. I made a box around that whole area. That's the flower. And now let's look in the sequence view. So yes, so, so you can see here's a run in a satin and a run and a satin. So I was missing a little bit of that flower. So I'm gonna right click now and I'm gonna group, okay? This is the hardest part about this is that these, these come in grouped, but you need to move them around. So then you have to ungroup them and then you got pieces. So you just have to kind of take your time and get them where you want. So let's put, now we can pull these down and it looks to me like they're fine. Okay, so now they're fine. Now. Let's see. Let's look at a couple of these other ones here. I think we'll have to play with eat too. Let's put sleep in here where we think we want it about. So I think that'll be pretty good. I think it was in this area. So that might be fine, kind of where I pulled them. And the eat could come down a little bit. I think maybe my sleep could too. So we know these two flowers are groups. So let's pull this one over here and maybe pull sleep down a little bit more like that. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now I think I want to bring the word eat down as well. So we got a couple little flowers up around the word eat. So let's see if we can get this little dude here see if I can draw a little, whoopsie, I got my eat. So I'm just going to pull eat up and get it out of the way here for a minute. And I'm going to see if I can draw a box around that little flower. I'm going to check to see if I got all the pieces over here. I think I did. Looks like it. Okay, now we can hit group. And then we might need to do, I think maybe these two little guys too. So let's see if we can get this one. Let's try this one. So I'm going to draw a little square around that little flower. Okay, and I'm going to check my sequence view. 
looks like I got the pieces. Okay. And I'm going to click group, right click and group. And then let's do this one too, just in case we need to move him. All right. So let's see if I can get this one. Okay. So this is the hardest thing about this little thing. You still, even though it's a nice scatter, we still needed to alter things a little bit. I'm going to right click and I'm going to group. All right. So now we got these little flowers right here, all grouped so we can play around with them. All right. So I'm going to pull them down just a little bit. And I'm going to pull the word eat down. Because I want my word eat like right in there, maybe over this way a little bit more. And the word sleep could come over this way just a little bit more. And it's going to look a little different than my original one, just so you know, because I'm just kind of, you know, whatever our scatter is. That actually looks pretty good. So what do you think? You like that? So eat, sleep, and then, then we want so kind of down in this area. So again, we're going to have to do a little bit of work with a couple of these flowers. So I'm going to go and I'm going to try to select this little flower right here. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to group that. And then let me see if I can get this little dude here. So let's draw the square around those. Then I'm going to right click and group. All right, so those two we can move now. So I'm going to move them over, and I think this one I'm going to put up here, actually, because we're going to need the word in here. Let's pull this one down, and then let's go get our word so and put it in here. And this one I had already grouped, so maybe we can put it above the word so, like that. What do you think? And see, I took one of the ones that was down here and I moved it up. So I know that one was grouped. And then I had the grouped ones over here. So what do you think? I kind of like that. And if there's still some that you don't like the position, like there's a whole bunch at the bottom here. And I think it looks a little sparse up here. So maybe we could take one of these little bitty guys. And let's group one of these little bitty guys down here. Right click and group. And let's pull it maybe up here like that. And then maybe we can right click and group this one and we could move it over a little bit. Okay. So that, I'm just going to play around, you know, and like, I'm just try this one. I like, I think I'd like to move this one over a little bit. I'm going to right click and I'm going to group. Okay. Like that. We think, and they don't have to be grouped. You know, they don't have to be grouped. I sometimes do group them. Um, and then often what I do is after I get them done, done moving, I'll just ungroup them again because they don't have to be grouped, but they are actually, um, let's take a look here and see what happened here. So, so you can see some of these are grouped and some of them aren't. Okay. So I've got part of them over here that aren't grouped. And then I have part that are grouped here. All right. So now everything's kind of wonky, but we might be able to fix that. Um, some of those designs like that. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just go through and check to see which ones are not grouped. You know, I'll just go ahead and we could just group them all if you want to. So like this one here is not grouped. Okay, so that one, this one we could group together. And then you know that the that all the pieces are together. So let's see, is this one grouped? I don't think this one is. So here, let's do this one. And I know on my other one, I just kind of grouped everything just because it made, whoops. Now see, that happens sometimes. So we're going to do undo is our friend. Because we want to just get the little flower, not the quilting. There we go. We're going to right click and group. So let's see. What other ones are not grouped? There's a bunch of them yet. This one had a bunch. So this one over here. Okay, so let's do this one. So we're just going to group them. I like them grouped because then, then I can, you know, work with them a little easier. And if I need to move them later, then they're all 
you know, together. Makes it hard to have them all be, okay, here's this one up here is not. So let's get this one. Right click and group. That one's groups. Let's see, there must be, there's a few more that aren't. This one over here, oh, this one here, this big one. Is it, so we'll get this one. So this is the part that takes the, the longest. It's just kind of playing with the flowers. And I just grouped them all just so I had them all in one piece. Oh, here, down here at the bottom. This one's not, so we'll get this one. Oops. Now, see, I moved something again. Hit undo. If you met, if you move something, you don't want it to be moved. I do that all the time. I'm always moving something. And right-click and group. Okay, so let's see. We're getting them all, almost all done. Right up over here, these little this little dude over here. There's the little guy. In group. And then let's see. There's another one over here, this bigger one. So we're going to select all that, and we're going to group. And then let's see. Where's oh, this little, little guy down here? Right click and group. And I think there's only one more, this one. One under the word so. And then I think we got them all. Okay. And that's what I did with mine, is I just grouped them all. Went through and grouped them. And then when you look over here, see now they're all grouped. Those little, little, all the little groups are there. And each flower is separate. So if you do need to go back in here and you want to slightly alter some of these, you know, if you want to move these around just a little bit more, then you don't have to worry about it. Moving, moving only part of it instead of the whole thing. Okay. So there is, I think that looks pretty good. What do you think? You like it? All right. So I placed the letters in my flowers where I wanted. Um, sometimes what I did now, these were the scatter did like a rotation too. But if you, if you want, like if you see two of the flowers, now these actually rotated better than my original ones did. So um, I didn't have to um, rotate the flowers, but if you want to rotate a flower, you know, select it. And then these are the little rotate on the corners. You can rotate it this way. If there's a different, a little different orientation, you want it. Um, these, these actually were a little more random than my original one was. So I had to do some turning and stuff of, on the other one. And, you know, if you don't want all of those flowers, you can delete a couple or you could add a couple more. In fact, the original one I did, I added a couple because it didn't put as many in there. So this one actually was a very nice scatter. So I liked this one. Okay. All right. Now, so I think we're kind of where we want to be. Let's go up here to fit. And I think we're where we want to be now. So we've got our words in here. So let's look at all of these. And then here's our lettering, okay, at the bottom. Now we need something. We need to reorganize this a little bit because it needs to sew in the order that you have to kind of think it through. So we know... Yeah, nice. It's just a fun little way to, and sometimes if you're not putting other stuff in, Jackie, you you could just let it scatter and it fills the whole thing. You know, in this case, we needed to move some stuff around because we were adding some lettering. Okay. All right. So we're going to organize this now so that we can get it to sew in the order we want. So the first thing, let's go through these over here in our sequence view. First thing that needs to sew is the placement line for the batting. And that is there, okay? Let me pull this down just a little bit. There we go. So we got that in the right spot. Then we're gonna lay the batting down and we're gonna tack it down and trim it. And that is what the second thing is, and that's a two play. So that's in the second spot and that's right. The third thing after we trim the batting, we're going to lay the fabric down, okay? And I'm going to, oh, yeah, it would be cute too, Marianne. That's a good idea. Just leave it the original size and make it into another little banner. <laughs> I like the little banners. <laughs> and then um, the third thing 
is going to be the tack down for the fabric. So we'll trim the batting and then we'll lay the fabric down for the front and then we're going to tack it down. And that's also a two ply. That's the third thing. So we got that in the right spot. The fourth thing is going to be the quilting. So that's what the fourth thing is. Then we want our scatter to go. So the scatter, all of our little flowers is going to go next. And then the lettering. So this fifth thing right now is in the wrong spot. We need that to be at the end because that's the thing that we're going to sew our envelope back on with. So we need that at the bottom. So I'm just going to grab this with my mouse and I'm going to pull it down. And I'm not quite all the way to the bottom yet, so we're just going to keep going all the way to the bottom. Like that. And we're going to, whoops, maybe did I get it? Nope. It's still up here. Got to bring it down and drop it on the last thing. There we go. Okay. I think we got it all the way down there. So then we got our all of our little flowers and our words and then the um, final stitching line. Okay. All right, so we got those in the right place. Now, let's make sure that we have it resequenced by color. You know, we told it to do that, but now we got all this groups here. So let's make it, uh, we're just going to make sure that it resequences by color, okay? So I'm going to go back up here. Um, I had to move my sewing line back down to the bottom. So I got my sewing line to the bottom, but it might actually try to put it back up to the top because you can resequence by color here too. So I'm going to go up to, it's under, oh gosh, it's under edit, resequence by color. So let's take a look and see what happens. So we're going to hit resequence by color. And if you look now, okay, I moved my, my, my one um, outline down, remember, but it stuck it back up because it was the same color as one of my other ones. So let's look where it ended up. It ended up, oh, under the third color. There it is. So this one here is a two ply, but the last one is a bean. So that's the one we know is the right one. So it actually did resequence them all by color. So then here's our white for our, our um, quilting. But then here's all the yellows and here's all the oranges. I put brown in my little daisies. But I need the second bean because it resequenced it back up to the color that it was. It was under a green. So I'm just going to pull that down to the bottom now. All right, because when we regrouped everything, like the, the little flowers, remember in the scatter, it resequenced it by color, but it had grouped it all together. And when we ungrouped everything, it would have changed it so that it would have gone yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange. So I just resequenced it by using it under edit. All right. Then I had to fix that one thing and had to go back to the bottom again. So there we go. We got our placement line, tack down line for the batting, tack down line for the fabric, quilting, flowers, centers, words. Then we're going to lay our backing on and do the final sewing all the way around. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the sewing. So there's our design. What do you think? It wasn't hard to make, was it? It was kind of fun. You can kind of group and ungroup things. And I'm just going to go ahead now and save this. So I'm going to go file, save as. Maybe. There we go. File, save as. Why is it let me not letting me save tonight? We'll take a look. Just a minute. <laughs> There's always something that causes me not to be able to save something. I should be able to save. I'm in my software. Just a minute. Yes, there, there is a recording of this. Yep. Let me go check my purchases to make sure I'm in the right thing. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, here it is. It's still trying this. There we go. 
it was still trying that. I hope my, my design is not all gone now. But if it is, it's okay. What happened to my design? That's weird. It was still in the other software. I think it was something to do with when I went into that other software. Isn't that weird? Huh. Oh, well. Well, you know, you saw it. I didn't get to save it, but I've already saved it once. The second here, make default. So I wonder what happened to it. It went into cyberspace. Recover. I have no idea where it happened to it. Well, I'll just bring the other one in. Don't mind me. I must have been because I just switched the software because it was still in the trial thing. It was still trying my that um, other software. And I think that's what happened. It was still trying it. Huh. Well, I'll just bring it in. How about that? I was late and size will be, oh, what size will this be? Cindy, I didn't hear, I didn't see. I'll just open it up in the other one. Sorry about that, guys. There's always something that happens, you know. So when you get it all done, which we have, I'm going to go file, save as over here. Okay. It still says I'm, I'm in a trial. That's why it's not letting me size. So I think it's something to do with when I went into the other one. I am in um, the pro version, but I don't know what's going on. I, I think I need to restart my software and I don't want to do that yet. So it, I just can't save it tonight. So I'm sorry. So um, I'm going to go file, save as, save it as a C2S. Okay. So because that is our native format. So we need to have that in order to go back and play with this. That's what we opened up. Um, the, I, that's what we opened up with the, with the little banner, you know, with the little, um, America, the beautiful, it was a C2S. So then we can go in and play with it. And then I'm going to go back to file, save as, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to save it as a PES. And in my case, a PES version nine. Okay. So, yeah, isn't that weird? Because it was like both of them were running at the same time. And when I went to save, I still can't get into the saving. Very strange. So I'll see if I can find it again. That's very odd. Let me try. Let's see. Activate, make default, discard. Okay. And then let me make sure this is my default. And then I'm going to just relaunch my software <laughs> to see if we can get, I can show you the, 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 the uh, savings. Sorry about that. I was playing around in too many things. All right. We'll just open it again. Cause I have it. It's only when you're live, you know, all right, there we go. So now, now let's see if it'll let me do it. Oh, I should now. Yes. See file, save as it thought I was in a trial version. So anyway, there's file, save as, and then I can, I'm going to use my C2S, okay, right here. And I was late in size. Oh, uh, Cindy, the size of this is 3.9 by 3.9. So it'll fit in a four by four frame. And I don't quite understand your question. Yes, Cindy, it will be on YouTube. And yes, Lynn, there is a recording of this. And Joyce, I'm not sure what, um, does it have to be highlighted? Um, no, not to save it, it doesn't. I think, is that what you're meaning? It Does it, does it need to be um, highlighted to be saved? And no, it doesn't. I think what my problem was, is I was, it thought I was in a trial version because I was playing around with that new cut and stitch. So I think it thought I was in a trial version. It wouldn't let me save. All right. So we, we'll save this as eat, sleep, sew as a C2S first. And then, which I already have it. And then I'll go file, save as again. And then I will change that to my PES version nine and save it as a PES file for my, my uh, computer or for my machine. Okay. And we've done that lots of times, so I think everybody knows what that is. So I wanted to let everybody know what the cutting was. Now, there's a cutting 
um, an instruction sheet for the sewing in that in that group or that uh, file that I made you. The backgrounds are five by five. The background, the main background is five by five. The batting piece is five by five. The back pieces are five by six. You cut two of them and you fold them in half with the wrong sides together. And then um, the two little inserts that make the, the uh, walnut shell insert are four by four. Okay. And then I wrote out all the, the sewing instructions for you. Okay. On a piece of paper with that. All right. So are there any questions? I think I answered all the questions I saw just recently, but I will put in YouTube, uh, on YouTube and under the, the video on Facebook, I'll have the, the um, link to the files. So if you need the files, okay. So sorry about the end there, but I think what it was is it thought I was in the trial version. It wouldn't let me save. I think I'm back to where I belong now. I just had to relaunch my software because I, I uh, was playing with cut and stitch. So, okay. I don't know where the design went though. It just disappeared. Okay. So anyway, I thought um, I, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to change and I'm, I think I'm going to stop sharing my screen and come up and, and we'll have a drawing for the pin cushion. Isn't that a cute little project? I just thought it would be something fun. So let me hit the stop sharing button just a minute here. And hopefully you'll be able to see me in a minute. So sorry for that little blurp at the end. Because <laughs> we had, we had uh, it must have thought that I was um, in the trial mode. So, but anyway, here's the instructions. These are in that file as well. Okay. The instructions for the sewing. I wrote it all out for you and step by step. Okay. And um, all the, the, the cutting instructions and everything are on there. And somebody gets to win a pin cushion tonight. Okay. So this is the pin cushion. I've got two of them. I'm only going to give one of them away though. I'm going to keep one. Okay. So and I made mine in pink letters with the yellow. I think I put brown on the daisies. And then the little um, pillow front, the little front is um, kind of a little mint green. Okay. All right. So I need to get a winner. So has everybody been commenting so that they can get entered? Where do I get the walnut shells? You know, Jan, <laughs> you're going to laugh at me because I make a lot of pin cushions. And I went to uh, Harbor Freight, and it's the stuff they use for sandblasting. It's walnut shells that they use for, like, sandblasting, like, uh, brick buildings and stuff. So um, that's what that's what I use um, for walnut shells. And I, and I had a great big box of them. There's, like, 25 pounds or something. So a whole bunch of us went together and bought a box together and then split it up. So that's what I use. You can buy just walnut shells um, like online that are made for pin cushions, just small bags. But I had to make a whole gob of pin cushions. <laughs> so I, that's why I got that great big box. So, And yes, you can get them at a pet store. They use crushed walnuts for like lizard bedding. I think that's what they, they, they use it for, for lizards or something. Some sort of pet. So anyway, that's what I got mine at Harbor Freight. So. Yeah, Amazon probably has them. I don't buy anything from Amazon, but um, yeah. So so, um, but I know they have just walnut shells that you can make pin cushions out of. So then there'd be smaller boxes. You know, you don't need a huge box, but but a whole bunch of us went together and got got the ones from uh, Harbor Freight. So, yep. So if you're gonna make a bunch of pin cushions, then you can have a great big box. So all right. So I'm gonna get my tablet here, and we're gonna have a drawing. So I gotta get all these mixed up. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna put my finger down. Let's see. Wanda Methany. Is, is that how you say your Methany? Wanda, how do you say your name? Is it Methany? M E T H A N Y. Wasn't sure how you 
how you pronounced it. So Wanda won the pin cushion. I'm going to write it down here so I don't forget. Wanda, and it's M-E-T-H-A-N-Y. So I don't, Wanda, I don't know where you're from. So can you send me a, um, uh, yes, is it Methany? Okay. So Wanda, can you send me a, um, M -A, is it M-A-T-H-E-N-Y? Okay. It's hard for me to see on the the screen it's a little small so and then uh wanda can you personal message me through facebook and give me your um mailing address and then i'll mail you the little pin cushion so wanda won the pin cushion it's like i thought it turned out cute i had a lot of fun making these so but i like to make things out of things i've already made so oh you're in tennessee too rhonda yep just go ahead and personal message me through facebook with your mailing address and i'll mail it to you so okay all right, everybody. So remember, next week, we will not have class. Next week is Memorial Day weekend, and I'm going to um, I'm going to take a week off, and I'm going to be working in the yard and maybe doing another quilt. And then um, the following week, the first week in June, we'll start working on the um, – I got to grab it back there. We're going to start working on the July – Kimberbell cutie. So here's the cutie that we're going to start working on the first of June or the first week in June. What is that date? That'd be the fourth, June 4th. Okay. So we're going to make, we're going to make this one, start working on this one. Now this is the one that is a little bit wonky. It it's smaller than the rest of them because of the type of block it has. The block isn't hard. But I had a little trouble with, um, I couldn't make it as small as they said it was supposed to be here. So then my borders didn't fit. So I tell you to wait and don't cut your borders until you get closer. Because I had to add a quarter of an inch to my borders because they were too short. Okay. So, um, and then I also had to make the flag different when we did the embroidery. So, I'll explain that when we get there, but this one, this one is smaller than all the rest of them. This is the only one that the, that's this size. So we'll be working on this in June. So next week we'll have a week off. So everybody have a nice safe Memorial Day weekend. And I will be seeing you all on the, I think it's the 4th of June. Is that what I decided? Yeah, the 4th of June. And we'll start working on another cutie. So thanks everybody for joining me. And I hope you enjoyed the little pin cushion. So this was a fun little class. And we'll be doing some sewing next time. So thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.